you ever seen an article headline about a painting or a work of art that sold for millions of dollars and you look at it and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. What does it mean? What are they trying to say? So what is the value of art? How do you determine the value of art? Who determines it? Why are things so expensive and others aren't? I pondered this question and looked into it a little bit. And it comes down to a couple things, mainly. Genre, size, reputation, scarcity. Those items are a little elusive. You gotta have like everything kind of playing off each other. The other big item that drives up the value of art is who owned it before it was put up for auction. Reputation of someone prestigious who owned the painting adds value to it. That's where it goes into auctions. You have two people just bidding on the same painting driving the value up. That doesn't mean that the painting itself is worth that. That just means that's what those two were willing to pay. So it's kind of this battle back and forth between two individuals with a lot of money. It's just this kind of rich people flexing on each other game. So I wouldn't say that totally matches the true intrinsic value of the painting itself. But then again, it's something that's hard to be determined. Another thing I'd add is that sometimes the story behind a painting can add value to it. I know a lot of Picasso paintings have stories behind it and where he was at in his life and kind of maybe the relationships he was having. You could see some types of parallels within those paintings and I think that makes it intriguing to others looking at it and trying to interpret it. But then again, all these things play into one another. Today I want to explore the topic of value. In my Bob Ross video, I took a brief moment to doodle on the Pop-Tart I had next to me. It was just kind of an afterthought that I did that. But I said, Pop-Tarts are rectangular and canvases are rectangular at times. I painted on that canvas-like item. And then I looked online and I searched like, has anyone painted on a Pop-Tart before? And everything thing that I saw that came up just said, here's how to paint a picture of a Pop-Tart. But no one had painted on a Pop-Tart. In my mind, box number one checked, first of its kind, a small indicator of value. Box number two automatically gets checked as it's rare. It would be the only copy because you cannot physically copy a Pop-Tart very easily. I'm not gonna rule it out when we have 3D printers and stuff. And number three, there's a story behind it. Why would someone do this? It's not a good story. It's kind of dumb, but I think it rides the line a little bit between being dumb and being maybe a little creative, just a little bit. Long-term goal, I want to make a painting on a pop star and try to submit it to a gallery or some place to be displayed, to be looked at. So we're gonna have to paint this thing first. Let's get our pop tart out. See what that looks like. This is the Fruit Loops brand. Don't use a correct pop tart if you're ever gonna paint a pop tart. To preserve it, I uh, rigged up this little frame. I actually have two frames that I glued together and I took the back off one and then put the little screen on the front. And then I have the back here. I don't like the color of it. I'm gonna paint that so then it's uh, it'll let the pop tart pop a little bit better. And I think I'm gonna use some super glue because I'm gonna glue it to the back of this and then we'll just pop it right onto the frame and then we'll have it in a nice little display. The other reason for the frame is that it's hard to hang up a Pop-Tart without like breaking it or damaging it. So I'm gonna paint the back of the frame first or I think I wanna do gray. Should have got the roller out, that would've been, that would've been way quicker. I did not take any art classes in high school or college. I took a visual literacy course, so I can see things really good because of that class. I will credit it for getting me into appreciating art. I'm not gonna promise you that this is revolutionary. And if it is done, it's not done by many. So I think that's rare in and of itself. Where the debate will come is whether this is totally pointless or not. I think if you have to ask whether something's really smart or really dumb, you've hit the sweet spot when it comes to making something. When I was younger, I used to like movies or books that really hammered home a specific message or point. And later on, I really started liking movies that kind of threw their hands up in the air about what 
the meaning was. You know, you have those ambiguous endings. Um, a lot of Coen Brothers movies are like that, where you kind of come away just kind of confused as to what to feel about the whole thing. And some people don't like that. Some people, they want to know what happened and want to know why and what the message was and, you know. I think we all want that. We want to know what it all meant, why it all meant something. And sometimes we have to face that truth that we may not be privileged to know. We don't get to know the meaning all the time. It's probably the hardest thing to grasp as a human is finding that closure or that moment where you, where it all makes sense to you. You know why you're doing what you're doing or why you are the way you are. But I've had the most fun when I didn't stop to think about that. I just kind of did it. So, painting Pop-Tart. Oh, that's dumb. So no other movie captures that better than The Big Lebowski. Should take it easy. Quit taking life so seriously. Have a good time while you do it. Okay. That looks lovely. I'm gonna put some super glue on the back of the Pop-Tart. I'm using Gorilla Glue. It's the strongest that I could find. And I think the back of this is uh, dry enough. Let's see if that stays. <laughs> oh man, look at that. <laughs> oh, this is really coming together. Now we've come to the really fun part is what, what colors do we make this? I'm not a big painter on things that you can recognize in reality. So I'm not gonna paint anything like a mountain or a happy little forest. If you decide to do this at home, you're more than welcome to do that. Go ahead, go for it. But I'm, I don't, I don't paint like that. I don't care to, I don't know how, I'm not good at it. <laughs> Picking colors is, is one of the best parts, I think. I really like cool colors, greens, blues. We're talking about value. Um, purple's really coming to mind for me because purple represents royalty because it was a difficult pigment to make back in the day. But now it's just as easy, so, but it's so ingrained in people's minds that purple's royalty. I'm gonna paint over the Fruit Loops part so we don't have any copyright issues from Fruit Loops because they're, they have a, uh, they have an edge on the whole circle department. I think that'll be our base color. So let's go ahead and we'll get our brush nice and painty. We'll just start painting over, over our Pop-Tart. You can already tell Pop-Tart's not having it. <laughs> it's not very happy with me. I never looked to see how well paint adheres to Pop-Tart. Any art critics out there? How's my technique? Is it good? Is it flawless? My painting with confidence. So the paint's having a real hard time sticking to the frosted part of the Pop-Tart. It makes it very hard to have a consistent background. Looks like the Grimace. They want to remember the Grimace from back when Ronald McDonald had all of his little buddies. The Hamburglar. Why don't they do that anymore? That McRib though, that's coming back. I've never had one. I don't really go there that much. We have our background in place. I think we can get going on uh, adding some more paint to this. Every color in the color wheel has a specific meaning, whether it be cool colors being green, serenity, peace, calm, or red being passion, or intensity, orange being energy. We just kind of associate those colors. It's like a rule of thumb, not like every single person thinks those things. It's subtle. Some of my favorite paintings I've done are where I've um, tried to express every emotion at once that I can. And it looks like quite the cluster. But I like that. You don't know what to think. And I think that speaks exactly to this. Because you're going to look at that and be like, I have no idea how to take that. And I think the biggest moral of the art value story is that if no one else values this thing, I will. That's fine. I'll hang it up. This has ignited some 
It's magic. So I have to think critically about how can I do this? I have to get a frame, I have to glue this on. How's the paint gonna stick to it? I don't know these things, you know? It's, it's, it's using this side of your mind that you don't normally have to do when you're, when you're grabbing a regular paper or, or a gesso board or a canvas and you're like, well, I know it's gonna stick to it because I've done this a million times. I've never painted a Pop-Tart. This is a whole new world. I'm opening up an avenue that, and having to think about things that I didn't have to consider before. So let's do it. These are my favorite types of acrylic paint. Not only because they're cheap, these are runny, they're consistent when it comes to doing some, some pouring. You need that when it comes to this type of art. So I recommend these bottles. They're already ready to go. You don't have to pull anything off. You don't have to stab it with a straightened out paper clip to get inside. I go through these like butter. I eat a lot of butter. Ooh, there we go happening. There's a lot of it. I don't like the lines I have going right now. And if I keep that up, I'm not going to be able to get every color of the rainbow in here. Hold that thought. We're going to try a new approach. I'm going to use a straw here. I'm going to I'm going to switch to a different paint. This is this Ocean Breeze? I like that. What do you think of that? Good color? We'll find out. Oh! There we go, look at this. Normally I would toss the paint, but I'm indoors, so I'm not gonna do that. If you get a big glob like that, that's fine. That's what was meant to happen. See, it's nice because the straw's got a little bit of, a little bit of spring to it. Ooh. So you really wanna choke up on it, because you're gonna fling it everywhere. And I wanna get my deposit back. Now we're getting some good lines. It's all trial and error. My next Pop-Tart will be really good. We're gonna introduce some contrast because we got a lot of coolness going on here, but we wanna bring the attention. So we're gonna load the red up in the gun. Okay, I'm really getting the hang of this. It just run out really easily, that's the problem. Now here's a good time to turn, turn it this way, so that way we get lines that are going kind of a different direction. As you'll see, I'm left-handed, so everything seems to kind of flow in one way. You have to either move or move your subject, which in this case it's easier to move the actual item. The blues kind of needed some some room to breathe. We're gonna give it that room. I was actually not expecting it to be this cool looking. If you don't think it's cool looking, that's fine. I'm happy with it and it's cool to please others. But if you're not happy at first, what are you doing it for? Time for orange. There we go, here we go. Look at this. A little bit of water helps, oh, helps the flow. Let's turn it again. Give me some yellow. We're getting some bold statements out of this yellow. I'm just lining the top of this brush here. I think we need more representation from our orange. Ooh. Always remember to aim down. I keep forgetting that and I'm just kind of flinging it. We don't want to overdo it. You might say we've already done that. Totally overdone this. You overdid it 20 minutes ago. Oh, the 
the shop though, I'm like, rug. So, I think there's a lot to love here. Um, you can't really tell anymore that this was a Pop-Tart. You'll just look at this and say there's this weird painting with like a growth or like a weird protrusion coming off of it. I think they would just leave it at that. They wouldn't even know like this is Pop-Tart. At the end of the day, what gives an art piece value? You do. You determine the value. I hope that struck a deep chord in all of you. No worries if it did. Art's a fun world. If you are moved by something you've seen deeply, take it. If it doesn't move you, that's fine. I may have moved the person next to you. So let them have their moment. And if they paid $22 million for the painting, oof, that's a lot of money. That's war-funded money right there. We'll check back in when this dries. I put my shirt back on for continuity purposes, but it's been a full 24 hours since we completed the painting, and it looks pretty nice. I need to put it onto the frame now. What happened? Did it like expand overnight? <laughs> so here it is. This is the beautiful Pop-Tart painting. If you have an idea that might be kind of stupid or no one may like, but you think it might be cool to try, go for it. It's not a waste of time. I encourage it. And if you do decide to make something that is a little out there, send it my way. I want to see it. And I'm going to reach out to some places and see if anyone wants to put this bad boy up. Till then, I'm gonna look at it.